I'm really not drunk, but I just, I know I don't look like an artist, and I thought I'd try harder, so. <laughs> You know, I've read to seven children, read bedtime stories, so I'm reading to you today, too. Our culture has an idea of what an artist looks like. I look more like a nice grandmother, which I am, happily. But I'm also a passionate, professional, abstract painter. I live and paint in Fargo, North Dakota. Ruth Landfield, a patron of the arts, titled Fargo the Athens of the Plains. Was Ruth correct, or was she dreaming? Maybe. She might have been wrong at the moment she said it, but if she could only see us now. Certainly the soil is fertile for Fargo's already thriving arts to become a greater beacon to the country in the energy and importance of our support and our expression in the arts. I know two musical organizations in Fargo from the inside, sitting in the best seat in the house in the back row of the second violins in the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony, and sometimes in the pit at the Fargo-Moorhead Opera Com Company. Both of these groups are unique in their achievements among communities the size of ours. Factors that I think contribute to our success in the arts are first our excellent local, economic health, our three local colleges, and our citizens who support the arts. A marvelous example is the Plains Art Museum, which just opened a beautiful new wing, the Catherine Kilborn Center for Creativity, 27,000 square feet, and it's dedicated to educating children and adults in art. We in Fargo can't always look to the big cities to give us guidance and inspiration. I believe that the major capitals of the world are mostly misguided right now when evaluating painting. Advertising and big money rule and have changed the manner of curating our art. Emphasis is on what sells, what can be contained in a soundbite. In this system, we lose the deeper art the more complex expression, the work that doesn't fit into an externally gen designated genre. Fixated on the descendants of Duchamp, the urinal is art, and later Andy Warhol, we seek the radically new and the shocking over the deep or personal, the haunting, the compelling. It is my belief that the links that unite one generation of painters to the next was almost broken completely by the pop art era. I have heard that painting, or the novel, or the symphony even, that they're dead. Yet all these art forms continue on. My pursuit, abstract painting, is alive, and it may be the greatest pathway to what we call the sublime. The abstract painting expresses emotion. It is ripe with code from the past, from art history, and the new voice of the individual painter, whose lines, shapes, and colors reveal his or her individual personality. These threads are as identifiable as a person's handwriting and can carry from one artist's painting to the next. The art market has been really hard on art. In 1991, Robert Hughes, the great critic, recently deceased, said, what strip mining is to nature, the art market has become to culture. Simon Critchley said in, in a recent online article, contemporary art is an easy thing to hate. All the meaningless hype, the identical hit openings in cities that blur into one long, banal, Beck's beer-fueled anxiety dream from which there is no escape, the seemingly endless proliferation of biennals, the biennalization or banalization of the world, glamour, celebrity, business, and radiant superficiality blend together. Capricious and seemingly tyrannical Uber curators wander around quickly with their assistants talking on cell phones. The sharp eyes of eager young gallerists track them like prey, waiting for the moment to pounce. Everyone is either on the make or wants to be on the make. 
Contemporary art has become a high-end global culture mall which requires very little previous literacy and where the routine flatness of the gossip allows you to get up to speed very quickly. People with the right connections or serious amounts of money or sheer stubborn persistence or who are prepared to do anything can quickly gain access to what is, has the appearance of a cultural experience. Nothing in that scene about the still, is about the still quiet voice of a meaningful painting, much less an experience of the sublime. Are we not lucky to be far away from such thinking in Fargo, North Dakota? Here's my own personal experience of the art market. 20 some years ago in San Francisco, I consulted a highly successful art agent about representing me. I'm sure I looked a little postpartum having birthed my last three girls in that, in that decade. The woman said she liked my paintings. I thought that would be all there, all there was to it, but she rejected me. She said I was too old and not ethnic enough. <laughs> Oofta. <laughs> <laughs> now I have students. My students, about 20 regulars, are predominantly ages 50 to 70. Most are women. All have led full lives. These students have founded or run companies, been college professors. One's a doctor, another an architect, and another a business consultant. Most are professional artists, or many are <laughs> professional artists or designers. Most are parents. They all delight when they spot magic occurring in their paintings. They talk amongst themselves, most always about art, surprisingly. They take turns presenting the art and artists of art history. In the throes of creation, they celebrate and despair together. Their work expands and grows. They learn the language of abstract art. They work to perfect their skills and their vision. You may know these people. If you do, don't tell them what I'm going to tell you now. Don't tell them that women constitute only 25% of, of the major shows in museums and galleries. Don't tell them they're too old, even though most curators are looking to the young. Don't mention that they live in the wrong city. They're not in New York. They're not in L.A. Don't tell them they have no future in art if someone didn't tell them they were artistic as children. I'm still trying to figure out what artistic means. <laughs> um, do not discourage them if they cannot draw a straight line or a perfect circle. I heard that old saw as a child, and I didn't measure up to that. You can tell them that the most important composer ever in the United States, Charles Ives, was an insurance executive, as was the great American poet Wallace Stevens. It can work to be an artist and have a day job. Tell them to ignore what's happening in the big global art market, and do tell them that the quality of their art should be their main focus. These students are able to produce sincere expressions and true beauty. They have many stories to tell and paint. They've lived full lives. Yes, they'll need to work more, further their art knowledge and practice, but please encourage them. Encouragement is a magical support to artistic effort. One student, a former Silicon Valley whiz kid, gave our class a name. She calls us the Plains School of Art. And why not? If the Hudson Valley could have a school of art, why can't we? And of course, we're in the Plains Art Museum, so. I challenge you to join us. I challenge all of you to join us in making art. If you have a song in your heart, a story to tell, or you wish to paint a, a picture, do it. You have no idea where it might lead you. Creative work is good for the soul and it could balance out your life. So I'm going to raise a glass to you and me and to our art. Thank you. <laughs>